Hey now, welcome to episode 9.1 of uh, overheating uh, troubleshooting, if you will. Um, this engine overheated on me the other day. Of course, uh, I'm hoping it's not the worst where I have a crack block. Um, I've been doing a couple, a bit of research. Of course, I asked a question out there on my last episode of what things to look for. I've also been doing my own research uh, in manuals and other locations. Um, so right now, I'm basically going to go through a troubleshooting um, learning exercise. I'm documenting this primarily for myself. Uh, no offense to anybody out there, but uh, I have the memory of a gnat. And so this will help me uh, down the road uh, when I have to do this kind of stuff again. But also, I'm, I do hope that it helps somebody out there. Um, my engine overheated, so I'm starting with the basics. I'm starting with uh, checking the hoses. Uh, I'm going to check the pressure inside the radiator. I just installed this radiator about a month and a half ago. Um, but before I do any of that, I'm going to remove the bonnet because... Uh, I'm all the time, I'm short and I'm all the time bumping my head. I know you guys are, you guys do the same thing. So I'm gonna remove the bonnet and then I'm gonna do a pressure, I'm gonna fill it up because the radiator was shy um, and we'll go from there. All right. 5 16 bolt and the half inch seems to work on just about everything on this car. So that's what these are on my car, 5 16 Okay, so what I'm going to do, yesterday I checked this after the overheating, after I did some research and stuff. Um, I checked my, my levels. Uh, first of all, what I did is I checked the oil because I was curious, do I have any oil in the car? And it was at the min mark, so it was low, but the oil was clean. It was dirty clean. It didn't look, it didn't have the uh, water oil uh, milky look. So I'm going to say that the oil's okay. I'm, I'm going to say that, and, I, and I'm going to test a little bit more, but I'm going to say that uh, the coolant is not leaking into the oil. So next, then I check the radiator. Now, I just installed this radiator like a month and a half ago, um, along with fixing the oil leak down here. Um, but And I found yesterday that this, there was no visible coolant. Now, I don't know if it's half full, if it's completely empty, I'm not sure. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill it, and then I'm going to uh, do a pressure test. All right, so I'm putting quite a bit of water in here, which leads me to think that this thing was empty. I, I don't remember how much this radiator holds. It's right at the full mark. We're, we're there, we're full. All right. So now, um, I don't know about uh, people around the world, but we have uh, a convenience to stores here where you can rent the tools. It's really free. You, you do have to pay a fee up front just to rent them, um, but if you return them, or when you return them, you get the money back. I'm not actually sure they charge your card or whatever, um, but anyways, you, you get the money back. So I have gone and I have rented a pressure tester, and... Now, this appears to be the wrong cap um, for this radiator because this cap is short, but I can't, in this kit that I have, I can't find um, a radiator cap that works except for this one. So I'm going to try this one and see if that helps. Now the radiator cap says 1.1. Um, I believe that's in atmospheres. So 1.1 atmospheres equals to 16, about 16.17 uh, PSI. So with the pressure gauge on, I'm going to pump it up to 16 PSI and we're gonna see what happens.
All right, so here we are. We are right at 15 PSI. I am going to hold this for a minute and just see if the needle is dropping. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it here just like this for a few minutes. I'm going to walk away. I'm going to go get a drink or something. I'm going to come back, and I'm going to see uh, if, if, if it's holding. All right, so I'm going to walk away. Okay, so one thing worth noting, before I started my pressure test, uh, the floor is clean. There's no water, there's no oil, um, there's nothing on the floor. So if I find a leak, uh, hopefully it will give me an idea of where it's coming from. So I walked away, um, wife called me in for dinner. And uh, yeah, I came back and I had zero pressure. So I, what I'm gonna do is, um, I found the leak, or I found a leak. I don't know if it's the sole culprit, but I did find a leak. And I'm gonna pump it up again just to check. Again, you know, I've hooked it up to the radiator. I'm gonna pump it up to 15 PSI. And, and because I know where the leak is, I'm already watching it and it's already leaking. So we are at, let's see here. Okay. So. You can sit here and you can watch the needle just slowly drop. It'll hold for a minute, and then it'll start dropping. It's starting to drop, right? So you all can see that, right? So now where the leak is, if you come over here, um, and I'm going to have to do a little bit of research to identify what the heck this line is. This line right here looks like it's coming out of the firewall or going into the firewall. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm guessing it's coming out because there's another line down here that's going in, and I'm guessing maybe it's for the heater. Uh, heater line goes into the car, maybe through the heater system, then it's coming back out, and then it's coming around here to this bad boy right here. And you can see, you can see the water leaking right there. So, What I failed to mention in my previous uh, video was that I also my, lost my indicators, my blinkers. Um, and I'm wondering now if this water is dripping on wiring somewhere that may have affected that. Because all the while, while this happened, we did get an electrical smell that smelled hot. But So there's a leak. I haven't been able to identify any other leak whatsoever um, so yeah I have come over here and I've looked everywhere that I possibly can looking for other leaks and let's see yeah look I mean the pressure is dropped down to 10 already and I don't see any other of course now it's dark in here but when I come down when I come down here You can see that it's leaking here off of that connection. And I followed that up. I basically kept looking in here and I followed it all the way up to this guy. So I'm guessing that's some sort of a, a control arm to a heater. Uh, maybe this will make sense to other people out there. I have not tried to turn over the car yet, but I'm going to. In fact, I'll do that here, here now, so.
Okay, hit it. Okay. Thank you. Will you hand me a paper towel? Blue one right there. What did you say? Right there. Awesome. Um, I said keep an eye out for the oven in the brown. I can't be out there. I'm trying to do my homework. Oh, all right, fine. All right, are you done with me, babe? Um. Yeah, I guess so. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so while the drip didn't look uh, really all that significant, it was definitely, it's left a huge, a fairly big puddle. Um, so, given the size of the radiator, I'm thinking that, yeah, that can uh, basically empty your radiator pretty quick. And I think it's blowing smoke. I think it's burning some oil, some not oil. I think it's burning some some water too, as can be seen from the uh, exhaust. I think tonight was um, a step forward in that uh, I found that this contraption here. Well, look at that. Um, when I hit that, it definitely sprays a lot of dirty water. I think that's related to the heater. I'm not sure, but it's definitely emptying the radiator. I do believe, looks like there's some water coming out of the tailpipe. So I don't know if that's commonly normal, um, but perhaps the head is still leaking some water also into the cylinder. Uh, it doesn't seem to be burning oil. Um, so, and, and then the other thing is my temperature gauge won't reset. It's like it peaked out, and now that it's peaked out, it's like gone above and beyond. It won't reset itself. Here's my temperature gauge. I'm not quite used to this kind of wire. Is, if, when these things peak out, um, does it ruin the uh, filament or however it's reading the temperature does it ruin it does it need to be replaced i guess is my question because my temp gauge in the car won't it's like stuck it's like maxed out where it was when the engine died and it won't reset itself so now i've got to figure out this i've got to figure out this guy um here and of course i've got to figure out how to fix this guy because he's definitely leaking big time um, sub problem or, or uh, adjacent problem is I've got to figure out my indicators. They're not working anymore. And I've got to figure out fuses. I guess I have to look in here at the fuse box. Um, but I won't worry about that just now. I want to get this engine. And as you can tell from earlier, I had a heck of a time from starting the engine. I've never had that much problem starting this engine. Um, I don't know, maybe because of all the issues that it just had, it just went through. It had a hard time starting, um, however, it did start, as you can tell, but boy, I, I, that kind of scared me. I never, I've never had that kind of a problem. In fact, I'm going to start it again just for the heck of it. I'm going to see if it'll start again now that it's already been running a little bit. Maybe, maybe I'll get lucky. Now, I know that it's running a little rough, and the reason it's running rougher, I think, than it should is because when we, my friend and I, Pete Raymond, when we replaced, when we fixed the oil down here next, next to the plate, next to the timing chain, um, we found out that it was out of timing, that the, the uh, timing, the gears were out of sync. And so we put, we put the gears correctly, and now the distributor's out. I need to have it timed. I need to go to a shop and have have it timed. That'll that'll clean it up a little bit. But it's starting. That's a good thing, I think.
Thank you for watching Lone Star Mini Restoration episode 9.1. Probably is going to continue into 9.2 and 3 until I figure this out. But at least tonight I think was somewhat successful in that I did find a, a weak point in the cooling system. And maybe that's why I've had overheating problems now for a while. So if I get this fixed, uh, although that wasn't leaking before. So I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm still scratching my head on this one. Um, maybe it's still leaking water into the cylinder um, in addition to this guy. I don't know. And so now I've got a temperature gauge issue. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, hope you're off to a good week. And uh, I'm going to call the night a learning curve, a success. And again, thanks for watching. Bye just now.